During the sitting of the House of Assembly on Tuesday, Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, Honorable Alan Chastney, explained that the COVID-19 situation in St. Lucia remains fluid and managing the virus continues to prove challenging. Adding to the challenges are the increasing variants of the virus and other changes locally, regionally and internationally. This, he noted, contributes to the complexity in the management of the virus. Honorable Chastney added that with this reality, the country cannot become complacent and the necessary steps must be taken to ensure health and safety. As part of efforts to combat the spread of the virus, the Prime Minister sought the extension of the state of emergency for an additional period of five months from the 17th of May 2021 to the 16th of October 2021. Speaker, you remember that I've often made reference to a dimmer switch rather than to an on-off switch. And that practice continues. As we see COVID numbers decreasing, then we can increase the activities. As we see the COVID cases reducing, then we can increase the number of activities. One will remember that we passed the COVID Act, Mr. Speaker, in order to incorporate most of the protocols that we are using under legislation. The only aspect of the COVID protocols that cannot be done under the COVID Act, Mr. Speaker, is in fact the curfew. Curfew can only be instituted through a state of emergency. Those, as I said, vaccination offers great hope, and I am optimistic that we will effectively turn the corner and the page on the pandemic this year. We cannot yet let our guard down. Not until St. Lucia and indeed most other countries from which we receive tourists are much closer to achieving herd immunity. Through the contact tracing process, we know that the transmission of COVID-19 is greater during social activities. The state of emergency facilitates the imposition of the curfew, which curbs the nighttime socialization documented to effectively control COVID-19 escalation. Undoubtedly, the current situation in Anguilla and India serve as a stark reminder of how quickly the situation can change and become dire. Honorable Shasni explained that while the vaccine brings some level of hope to the grim reality of COVID-19, the country remains at risk to the virus and its negative effects. That is, until herd immunity can be achieved. It is therefore necessary that individuals get vaccinated and all precautions are taken to protect the citizenry. In an effort to ensure the safety of the citizenry, the state of emergency needs to be extended to allow for and to provide for any change in the dynamics of the spread of the virus. Mr. Speaker, until we reach herd immunity, we will remain exposed to an outbreak. It does not take much to turn the corner. There remains a continuing threat to the health of the population. This will allow action to be taken with immediate dispatch on the advice of the chief medical officer where there is a need to take essential and urgent measures. The Prime Minister added that the state of emergency has thus far proven effective as the island recorded a significant reduction in active COVID-19 cases. While I am sure that many persons have grown somewhat fatigued, just as I have, with the curb that this state of affairs brought by the pandemic has imposed on regular social life and movement, I am pleased to note that we have over the past two months seen a gradual decline in the number of active cases. As a consequence, we have begun the phased relaxation of restrictions. Further. I have on many occasions reiterated the importance of St. Lucia reopening our economy and getting our people back to work. Indeed, the interconnected nature of our economy with the international trade and travel makes this not only inevitable, but vital. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney speaking there at Tuesday's sitting of the House of Assembly.